Hey everybody, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel. Hey, before we get started on today's video on non-VA, non-FHA type loans, do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, click on the notification bell. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below in the comment section. Now let's get to today's video. So in today's video, we're going to discuss types of mortgages that you have to know for your real estate exam that they tip, they're, they're not backed by the federal government and they don't kind of, they don't fit into the criteria of typical residential conventional type loans, uh, but they are loans and they are valid and real in the real estate industry, particularly in like the commercial, industrial those types of arenas of real estate, but we have to know what they are, at least have a basics of what they are. And there are six of them that we're gonna talk about today. I have them on your screen here. We're gonna discuss open end mortgages, blanket mortgages, second mortgages, term mortgages, wraparound mortgages, and what we call shared appreciation mortgage. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. Open end mortgages. Now, open end mortgages are commonly known as maybe you've heard of a home equity line of credit or what we call a HELOC. Um, it allows the mortgagor. Now, here is a key real estate term. Actually, there are two that you have to know. We've discussed them in previous videos, but it's the mortgagor. The mortgagor is the borrower. And then we have the mortgage E and the mortgage E is the lender. Two E's in mortgagee, two E's in lender. So what we see here is in your example, well, let's say we have a property that's valued at 200,000 and they have a first mortgage. Uh, maybe it's an FHA, a, a, you know, a Federal Housing Administration loan or a conventional loan. It doesn't matter, but it is for $100,000. That's the balance of the first mortgage. So the borrower goes out and they apply and get approved for a HELOC. And on your screen, notice I put $60,000 available to borrow. Now, typically what will happen is the lender will set a limit or what a loan to value ratio. So maybe it's 25% of or 75% of the, the home value is what they're willing to borrow. So in our case, uh, $200,000 and uh, there's a $100,000 loan balance. And based on the ratios for that particular lender, they're saying, listen, we're going to borrow up to $160,000 of the home's value. So you have $60,000 from which you can draw on whenever you want. And usually you don't pay any fee. I mean, there's no interest being paid until you actually borrow money against it. And so you have $60,000 available to make home repairs or basically whatever you want. That's called a home equity line of credit or what we call a HELOC. That is one type of an open end mortgage. There are different types, but we're not going to get into them here. I just wanted to illustrate how an open end mortgage works. Now, the second type of mortgage I want to talk about is what's called a blanket mortgage. Now, a blanket mor mortgage is essentially one loan that covers separate properties or several individually deeded properties. And they're very common with developers of sub subdivisions. So let, let me give you an example. Let's say that a developer goes out and they have 20 acres that they're gonna develop. Uh, they're gonna have 50 lots with 50 homes built on each one of those lots. And they go out and get a million dollar loan. Now that million dollar loan is gonna be placed against or liens are gonna be placed against all 50 lots. But what it does is this particular type of mortgage has in the mortgage language, which creates what we call a par partial release clause, or sometimes just called a, a release clause. It can, those two terms can be used interchangeably. And it allows the developer, as they sell off the individual lots, that the lien against that lot is removed from the overall uh, the overall first mortgage. So it's just a way for them to loan money to a developer. And then as the developer sells off those individual lots, there's a partial release. So that individual lot can be released. That lien is removed against it uh, from the first mortgage. So that is one of the benefits of a blanket mortgage. 
The third type of loan I want to talk about is a second mortgage or sometimes that we called a junior mortgage. Now this is a fixed dollar amount and the second mortgage is junior or what we call a lower priority to any existing mortgages that are currently levied against the property. So on your screen, I have an example. The home is valued at 200,000. There is a first mortgage in the amount of 120,000 with a one bank. So when the buyers went and bought this property, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, or whatever the case may be, they went to a one bank, they borrowed whatever amount the balance now is $120,000. Okay, so five years later, they want to put windows and siding and all that. So they they go and get a second mortgage from a two bank for $40,000. The key here is it's fixed. Unlike our open end mortgage where, you know, you have a, a pool of money to borrow against, this is just, they're, they're, they're going to, you know, it's one fixed amount. Hey, the windows and doors and siding is going to cost $40,000. And so they get a second mortgage. All right. The second mortgages are subordinate to senior liens. So what I mean, so here's how subordination works. So as you can see on your screen, the borrower went to A1 Mortgage when they purchased the property on August 1st, 2019 and got a $120,000 loan. So A1 Mortgage is in first place, meaning if the borrower defaults on their payments and they stop making payments, then A1 Mortgage has the first right to do the foreclosure. They're in first place. And the way that lien priorities work is it's first come, first serve. So a year and a month later, the buyer decides that they want to uh, put on new doors, windows, and siding, and it's going to cost $40,000. So they go to A2 Mortgage and finance the $40,000 for the work to be done. Well, A1 Mortgage is in first place. A2 Mortgage is in second place. Again, so if the borrower defaults on making those payments, then A1 Mortgage is in still, first, still has the first priority, meaning they're the first one that has the right to foreclose. So let's say a year after that, the interest rates are stupid low and the borrower says, well, A1 Mortgage, my interest rate's at 4%. Currently, I can go to A3 Mortgage and get 2.75. Certainly, they would want to do that. So what has to happen? For A3 Mortgage to do the refinancing, a two mortgage is going to have to subordinate. Because think about it, if a three mortgage simply pays off a one mortgage's $120,000 loan, that means that a two moves up into first place. And if you're a first mortgage type company, you don't want that. In fact, you won't allow that to happen. So there's going to be a contingency. So what the borrower is going to do, the borrower is going to go to A2 Mortgage and say, listen, I'm going to refinance my first mortgage, uh, but I need you to sign the subordination agreement. And that means that A2 Mortgage is voluntarily allowing A3 Mortgage to jump into first lien priority. Um, you might be asking, why would any bank do this? Well, everybody knows the game in the industry. There are certain companies that are only primary mortgages, and there are some companies that are secondary mortgages, and they know the drill. They know the game. It's very common. It happens all the time. And the, one of the reasons is, is because a, if you're, if you're a, a primary mortgage company, you will not, you, if you're not in first lien priority, you would not be able to portfolio that loan and sell it on the secondary mortgage market. Uh, we discussed that in a previous video, how the secondary mortgage market works. So typically second mortgages are held in-house, meaning whoever the, the bank is that's issuing the loan for the second mortgage, they keep that in-house. They don't sell it off to, a, to the secondary mortgage market. So that's why this is done. All right, the next type of loan I wanna talk about is called term mortgages. Now, they're not very common. Uh, they're common in the builder community, or at least they used to be. They're not so much anymore, but they still do exist. And what it allows is for a builder to go out and have a pool of money to draw from. And, but the repayment period is over a specific period of time, and it's shorter in nature. So, so maybe a builder goes out and finances 
$300,000 or $500,000 and the term loan is to the term is to be paid back you know at the end of 3 4 or 5 year period and i got an example on your screen there so they borrowed 500,000 there's going to be a $100,000 payment due after the first year another $100,000 due on the second year anniversary and then the balance is due on the third year anniversary the, that's not set in stone, that process. They may go out and just borrow the money and the one and only payment is due after three years or after four years. I've seen some that are structured where every year there's just a, it's a seven year term loan and every year only the interest is due and then on the seventh year, the principal and interest is due all at the same time. So uh, the interest meaning the final year of interest. How it's structured can change, but the thing you need to know is term mortgages are, are there for a specific period of time for repayment. And, and that's the basic thing that you need to know. The next type of loan is called a wraparound mortgage. This is where we have two or more mortgages consolidated into one payment. So maybe there's three properties, three different mortgages, and we consolidate them into one payment. Now, what's the difference between a wraparound mortgage and a blanket mortgage and that is with a wraparound mortgage there is no partial release clause or a release clause so they would not be able to sell off each property individually and get that lien that mortgage lien removed against the property unlike a blanket mortgage where that is allowed there's a partial release clause in that mortgage you don't see that with wraparound mortgages wraparound mortgages are really not common anymore and if you do see them it's usually a very very highly qualified buyer with a lot of assets in a local bank and then the local bank is taking the risk and and that's why you really don't see them anymore because you can't sell them on the secondary mortgage market either so the local bank's going to hold that loan in-house all right, the, the sixth and final type of mortgage I want to talk about is what's called a shared appreciation mortgage or commonly known as a SAM. And what makes this very unique is the lender is going to benefit or profit from the future appreciation in value of this property. And that future appreciation value is capped at 40%. It can be lower than 40% but it cannot be more than 40%. There is a max. And we call that future appreciated percentage a contingent interest. That is a key real estate term that you have to know. So let me explain how this works. Let's say somebody borrows a million dollars from the bank and it's a SAM mortgage. Well, that property is going to appreciate in value. So instead of interest being paid to the lender, the lender is going to share in the profits. And so that million dollar property that was mortgaged is going to increase in value. We call that appreciation. Well, at the end of a specified period of time, typically 10 years, then the, loan, the, the lender is going to get their million dollars back plus 40% of the appreciated value. So if it appreciated a million dollars, so now the property is worth $2 million, that lender after a 10 year period is gonna get their million dollars back plus 40% of the appreciated value, which is another million dollars. So they're gonna make $400,000 on that property. Now that net appreciated percentage is paid when, when and if the property is sold, uh, the loan is paid off, or a 10 year period, all right? So typically these are for 10 year periods. However, if uh, let's say the property is refinanced after five years or the property is sold within that 10 year period, then again, that net appreciated value up to the date of closing is gonna be paid to the lender who loaned the original money. These are not common at all in residential property. It's mainly just limited to those bigger type properties like uh, commercial type properties or developments of commercial type. Now, if you're gonna continue to study for your real estate licensing exam, you might wanna check out this video. It's gonna dovetail into what we've been talking about here in this video. And if you have not uh, subscribed to the channel, 
please do me a favor and subscribe. Click on the little circle to my left. I would appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.